We usually woke us up before four this morning. Quite eager to get uh, stuck into the fish. And uh, we had to stop here to say morning because I know when we go over that dune, you're going to go wild <laughs> with that water. I've been, uh, I think I woke up at about one o'clock and I think if I had to, I would have run all the way to Mzanzini. The weather's just right, it's absolutely perfect. Sea's good, conditions good. That's what I'm gagging to get over that, uh, over that hill and go throw some bait. We walked this beautiful path from uh, Mzanzini Forest Lodge over the decks here. It's about a kilometre walk uh, to the to the water. Not even quite a kilometre yeah. small, 600 metres. It's, it's so convenient. Yeah. I didn't think that it was uh, it was this close to the beach. And uh, yeah, not far down the beach. Like, can we go now, please? We can go now. <laughs> Okay, just the standard little mackerel, open up the gill plate, uh, push two holes here in the front of the head, there's little almost canisters of oil in there to release and cut the tail off so it doesn't torpedo in the water. Then you secure this hook to sit proud and uh, your carrying hook, the front one, you just stick through the lips like that. And I like doing it at a 90 degree angle. Um, some people do it 180, one facing top, one facing body, off bottom. But uh, I like doing the 90 degrees, so it's almost a guaranteed hookup or a better chance of a hookup should it come out of the mouth any which way. It's a bright and early morning for me. I just got barreled in the shore break by a big foamy on the head. <laughs> but uh, today I've opted to, to fish throw bait, and um, I've actually left the sliding reel behind. I bought my Torque 50 with 047 line, and... Um, I'm going to, you know, instead of sliding bit baits, I'm actually going to throw bait today and, and, and work on a, on a species count. I'm going to target a diamond first of all, and uh, as the tide goes out, we're going to target sandies and brown skates on the pushing tide. But uh, today it's all about throw baits and uh, targeting those, those, those fish on, on actual throwing baits instead of sliding the sliding technique. We're going to see what works better. Andre is sliding baits, I'm going to be throwing baits, and Let's see if, uh, who gets the pull the quickest. One of the main theories behind casting and sliding, I believe, and it is my opinion, that if you cast a bait, and if the formation serves right, that you can actually cast the bait into fishable water, you get baits in the water a lot quicker into the zone than you do with a slide bait. On average, it normally takes a slide bait about sort of 8 to 10 minutes to get down to the bait, depending on the water formation and the currents, etc. But um, yeah, today we're going to see if, if that theory works out. If you, if you can throw a bait into fishable water, your chances of getting a bite a lot quicker um, because your bait's there on impact and not taking 10 minutes to get down to the actual sinker. Morning in there. Well, as I said, that uh, formation to me just looked right, and uh, for a smaller cut mackerel head, nice fresh mackerel. Well, this is what you wake up for at one o'clock in the morning after only going to sleep at ten o'clock. It's just to come to the beach and feel that rod get pulled out of your hands <laughs> as an angler, whether it's a small fish or a big fish. It's always a best feeling. <laughs> because of the formation that we're actually fishing in, as I've explained about the currents in the bank and so forth, the current on this side of the bank, on the northern side of the bank, is going from north to south. And obviously, as it comes in the channel, it's picking up speed and going around the bank and meeting the south to north current. And these, these bigger flat fish, because they've got so much weight and so much girth that they will use those currents to the best of their ability and they will just, every bit of current that they, they can find, they will just sit in the current, turn their body sideways and that will make it extremely hard to pull it.
watching the fish on the bank and I could just see the wing and it turned into that gutter and something swam straight into the line and maybe it got eaten just on the shore break and uh, departed. Must have been maybe a big Zambezi thought that it was uh, breakfast. Yeah, as you can see, if you have a look at this, it's frayed from the back to there and it's actually been cut off. But what normally happens here on these, on these banks is that uh, you get packers and busy sharks and when a fish is in distress you get that 50, 60, 70 kilo size shark that, that hunt and packs a, a few of the fish and when they come towards the fish sometimes they grab your line and that there you can see it is almost guaranteed exactly what happened. Still two hours before low but with the tide still sucking a bit it will help getting a chock out. It's not easy getting a chock out sometimes especially over bank. We're on the new moon spring, so the tide sucks back quite, quite quickly. And if you look at where my rod was and look at the braid on my reel, probably gone about 80 meters further than what I was just now. And that should make quite a big difference. Tide sucking, I feel this bait just going out. So all good, it's, it's got a bit of a side wash now over this bank. So my line's going in, in a bow and that will straighten up as soon as the bait's out. But uh, something, something, yeah. No, it's uh, when you're fishing beaches like this that have got very similar formation. I found a nice bank here. I've had two throws and 10 minutes after baits at the water. Oh, oh hello. Got some attitude, this fella. Now, as mentioned before, I said I was opting today just to throw baits, no slide baits. And when you're throwing into deep water, you don't need to slide. You're getting a big enough bait into fishable water. And um, it's quite nice because you can, you get a bite, you get a bait in the water really quick. I woke up this morning at one o'clock to get to the, to get up the coast here in time, to get a fish out like that. It just makes everything worth it. Got a fish eaten off this morning, had another pull, lost that. Eventually got that nice big sandy. And the, uh, the sandies are, they come to our beaches in the summer months, especially when you get hot, humid conditions. Low barometer pressure or stable barometer pressure and uh, a bit of a easterly wind after easterly winds. And that's when you really can target those big sandies. And for me, yeah, I'm too chuffed. <laughs> Feels like a good fish. These flat banks. Always worried that your line might touch the bank. So it's better to get a bit of height. And he's using the current. Tell you yet what it is. <laughs> Honeycomb loves doing that. Just swimming in fast. And trust me, it's not nice and cool yeah it's not as hot as last week but still middle summer it's in zini you know about it i've got those big waves to my advantage there okay, i'm gonna get him back quickly fight another they grow nice and big they get over 100 kilos 